yeah, so this is uh, Philip. I'm just gonna go into one feature that's been drastically improved, and that is the use or creation of animated brushes. From the brush menu, you go down to more, and you can open an animated brush if you have one already created and saved in the ANB format, of course, the animated brush. But uh, the part that's particularly interesting is uh, right now here under the load sequence, right? So you can load an image sequence much better than ever before. So if you look at a folder in which you have images in a sequence, um, such as for in example this one here I have some animation sequence or have even some called animate brush but it's just the name of the folder um, I have a can of worms here for example right? so I have a bunch of BMP files and if I load that uh, let's say from here to here shift click that to select all your BMP files because right now I'm looking for files in many different formats if I'm only looking for bitmap files then here they are um, what that's going to do is load those and pretty quickly now uh, right into the brush. Now uh, the size is not 100%, we can quickly fix that. The opacity is not necessarily, yep it is. Uh, the step distance is what it is, we can change that too. So as you paint you can see this one has the alpha inverted. Um, it's really up to the application as to how it interprets what the alpha represents, right? Is it the opacity or is it the counterpart, the transparency? And so we may use it one way or the other. So we can simply now uh, go to the brush menu and invert transparency. And that's how cool that is. Look at that. Now we have it properly um, transparent on the outside. And so let's say we reduce the size of the brush, something like this get them a little bit closer, uh, maybe even change the angle as part of the uh, rotation. So first of all you see we got a can of worms here really, it's m moving ever so slowly what's actually the image sequence there. If I store that brush, store and manage a copy, uh, you see normally just one image. Uh, here it's the first one in a whole series. So if you look at the film strip uh, you can see it go all the way down and it's a nice little can of worms animation. So whatever you load into the brush as an image sequence, uh, it will be there for you to do all sorts of magic with it. Uh, you can also do a bunch of other things, like for instance change the color of it, right? So there is RGB, red, green, blue. If you reduce the amount of red, it will turn into more of a purple color. If you increase maybe the amount of red or blue or whatever color it is you're changing, uh, you can do a bunch of different, uh, you can get very different types of brushes with that just from the color, from the contrast, from the uh, the hue saturation value, uh, you can make them very dark, something like this, uh, spooky dark, um, and so that's the, the thing that's really cool now, you can, uh, you can go to the brush, uh, let's see what other animations we have uh, under the more menu, load the sequence, and uh, in fact also other formats now so we had uh, a bunch of BMP before this is another sequence uh, we have JPEGs now JPEGs don't have an alpha channel so when you load those you will essentially see the whole square or rectangular area of those pixels uh, but still you can use that uh, if that's what your heart desires um, let's let's store that one too so we have another brush here um, this one I'm gonna go also load it as PNG. That's another format that we use a lot more now. So I'm gonna go to the more and load and let's go back to PNG or in fact just show me everything and I may have saved that in PNG. TIFF also works nicely very fast. Let's go with the TIFF images and here they are. So now that one has a very crisp edge. All right, so for this one I actually did cut it off not in a smooth transition but the alpha channel was on or off, nothing in between. So you create some really interesting things. And of course you can combine that with a bunch of other things. Uh, let's go first, store that. Store and manage a copy. There it is. And again, it's it's an animated brush. So it's a image sequence. We can show the film strip. And there it is. Uh, we can make it a little bit wider so you can see the whole um, 
image sequence. So this could be a little walk sequence, maybe you use Poser or Dash Studio or whatever 3D animation tools and you have a walk sequence or you draw it actually, you can draw a bunch of uh, poses for a walking character uh, and then simply load that as an image sequence and you can paint that, you know, make it go from left to right or whatever. But you can also do some other wacky stuff uh, such as for example uh, using the mirror uh, horizontal and vertical mirror so whatever you're drawing here is mirrored and you can also put that against an animation itself so we have an animation in the brush and we're going to put that into an animation so we're going to paint it across an animation let's go create an animation let's say uh, i don't know 44 frames something like that and then just hold the alt key down and as you're painting while the alt key is down it's actually advancing from one frame you see that at the top here it's going from one frame to the next and so you can create all sorts of really funky stuff sorry if you get motion sick here nauseated <laughs> so uh, you can play that uh, and then you can of course also do a bunch of other things let's turn the brush off let's turn the the image uh, mirroring off the horizontal mirror and vertical mirror so we have simply a playback now like that and we might want to put that on the tunnel so we have a tunnel vision now it's better if it's actually a squared image so we, we might want to resample that Let's go uh, resample it to 512 by 512 and uh, make sure it's not locked together so we can do the aspect, the change in the aspect ratio. Whoop, it was locked, did it? Uh, did I lock that? Did I unlock? You know what? I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe that's a new interface I'm not too familiar with. Let's, let's just select square like this, 400. Actually, I think 512 by 512 would really be recommended. I don't have it as a preset here yet, so I could do that. I could create it, but let me uh, put it in here now since it's locked and it's uh, at the square aspect ratio already. Right? So that's thinking outside the box. If it doesn't work, just make it work. Go to another square, even if it's not the right size, and then change it and the other one will follow. Uh, to match the same dimensions. Alright, so I'm going to resize it here and it's going to be 512 by 512 and there it is. Now I'm going to turn that into, uh, or add the, the tunnel to that. So I'm going to go to the f uh, animated category and apply tunnel. And uh, maybe we'll do something, just the default values. And there we are. So now we're flying into some sort of a weird tunnel. Anyway, this is some of the stuff that we will be seeing also in the tutorial coming up at uh, Digital Art Live October 4. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching.